Hello! This is the first in hopefully a mini-series. We're going to look at different aspects of the Lance's moveset and try and optimize them to make our hunt smoother and faster. I'm Miles and welcome to the Goebbels Lantern. Okay, so in this video we're going to focus on Spiral Thrust. It's one of the new toys given to Lance in Monster Hunter Rise and it's also very strong. If you can only master one aspect of the Lance, make sure it's Spiral Thrust. I'm going to quickly cover the basics to get everyone to the same playing field, and then we can talk about the fancy tips and tricks to really optimize your use of Spiral Thrust. Spiral Thrust is a switch skill that you unlock by doing the HR5 quest, Learn the Lance. The easiest way to think about Spiral Thrust is as if it were a fancy triple poke because it gives you three hits as a combo and because the damage is weighted towards the end. The motion values being 50, 80, 90. The first two hits are controlled with the analog stick pointing to where you want to go and if you want the final hit you press X after you've done the two thrusts. And finally there is a guard point or a counter at the very start of the animation. If you pull it off, your lance will start to glow blue. And while that glow lasts, you'll get a 10% boost to your raw damage. Cool, now that we're all caught up to speed, let's start talking about the more advanced stuff. Spiral thrust can be negated if you're countering a monster's attack that is producing high knockback. And this means bringing one or two points of guard is a good choice for some monsters, but it is niche. On one side, you've got monsters that don't need guard to get your lance to glow, and on the other side, you've got monsters that don't hit you enough, and so you're not aiming for your lance to glow. And right in the middle, you've got a couple monsters where it could be worth bringing a few points of guard to the fight. That was one half of the ways that you can improve your lance play before you're even in a hunt. And the other half is knowing when to bring offensive guard. This is again, monster specific. And so you'll find that offensive guard is really, really good for some monsters. And for others, it's less so. The question of when to bring offensive guard is also more complicated than when to bring guard because it changes based on multiplayer as well. So if there's one thing for you to take away from this section of the video, tailor your skills to the monster that you're planning to fight. So moving on to actually using Spiral Thrust in a fight, it can be really difficult to actually aim it well and land all the hits of Spiral Thrust. So the first tip to help you aim better is a little bit obvious, but I see a lot of people not doing it regardless, and that is to re-angle your camera after the first hit so that you can actually see the monster in front of you while you're aiming the second part of Spiral Thrust. And to really optimize this, I'd recommend increasing your camera speed to as fast as you're comfortable with so that you can spin the camera in the blink of an eye. Another thing that's really useful is knowing when to prioritize the second and third hits to maximize your damage output. Realistically, you're not always going to be able to land every single hit spiral thrust, and in those cases, it's better to use the first hit to reposition than it is to hit with the first hit and miss the second and third. In a similar vein, if the monster's wiggled forward or sideways, it's good to use the first hit as a pivot point to get those last two hits on the weaker point. Ideally, you still want to be hitting the monster while you're moving back into position. More on that later. But always prioritize the last two hits. A great example of when to prioritize the second and third hits of Spiral Thrust is when you're using Spiral Thrust to avoid attacks and avoiding attacks with Spiral Thrust itself is a really good trick to have up your sleeve. Normally, you'd want to counter the attack, get your lance to glow, and then carry out the Spiral Thrust. But if the knockback is too high, then more often than not, 
you'll find that blocking the attack and then trying to spiral thrust will lead to you either missing the hits or getting hit yourself because there's just not enough time to fit the whole combo in. It's at this point where using your first dash of spiral thrust to avoid the attack and then the second two to come in and punish it is the best option DPS wise and it makes you look like a badass. So going back to what we touched upon earlier, how do we get the most out of the first hit of Spiral Thrust? If you're already at the weak point, then it's pretty simple. You just pass through the weak point with the first hit, but it's more complicated if you're out of position, because then you're using the first hit to get into position to hit with the second and third. So if you look for the points where you are then able to carry out the second and third hits on the weak point, you then want to look for secondary weak points, or even just monster body parts that you can pass through to get to those points. That way, you're still getting the maximum amount of damage with your second and third hits, but you're still getting something out of your first one. And to mention it one final time, the second and third hits are always your priority, so only go for the first hit if you know you've got the other two guaranteed. My next tip is something that you can probably apply to most weapons, and that is to go fast, you have to go slow. And by that, I mean don't blindly button mash to get things to happen as quickly as possible. Spiral Thrust has a little bit of leeway after you've done your first dash before you have to input your second dash. It's a very tight window, but that tight window is enough to see what the monster's doing, which in turn allows you to better angle your next hit. On a personal note, this is definitely the thing that I'm most guilty of, because I'm a bit of a monkey brain. But when I give myself that extra quarter second, for each dash, it greatly improves my consistency with Spiral Thrust. And that's that. We've come to the end of the video. You should have a better understanding of Spiral Thrust. And I hope you enjoyed some of the clips that I've put in here. The plan for the next video in this mini-series is going to be all about the shield. So look forward to that. Although I might be posting some other stuff from the pipeline before we get there. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.